Yo, what's up everybody, Jumpin' Hat, and I am today on some Outriders World Slayer, and I'm going to be showing you the most overpowered build that no one is using. I looked on YouTube, and I haven't seen people talking about the Pyromancer gun build. This build is ridiculous, and you're going to see it in this gameplay. This is kind of some general mobbing in the beginning here, but just if you pay attention to the numbers, they are just mind-blowing on how you're able to melt giant enemies. Now the best part about this build is that it's really easy to construct. Right out the gate, the moment you start the DLC, if you go down this path, you're pretty overpowered like right away once you get your PAX points. And I'm going to explain that later. But it's really easy to construct. It's extremely easy to play because the gun that I recommend using is actually an LMG. And with an LMG, you can really get away with a lot of great stuff. And you have tons of range. That's one of the nice things. You can cross map enemies and this clip kind of demonstrates that because you don't really have a lot of damage fall off. So you can just shoot enemies from pretty far away and kill them and completely destroy that boss. Now right here, this is the only clip where I'm using Feed the Flame. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later because you have that option. I'm not a big fan of that option, but it is something that can potentially up your damage. I mean, the numbers are just... Ridiculous. This is a kind of funny clip because this behemoth kind of snuck up on me and got deleted. And right here, this is one of those really annoying, super strong wizard enemies, and it's going to get completely melted. And the whole part about this build, the way that you play it, is that you have to keep shooting. That's basically it. As long as you're shooting, you're building up and ramping up your damage, and you have a huge magazine to help you with that. So, really, one of the best guns for the build for just taking out bosses really quickly, and if you look at those numbers there against the Arbiter, and that was in co-op. This right here is actually a solo, and this is just me trying to kill him as fast as I can by shooting him. And then the very next clip is going to be me taking him from pretty much full health to zero ridiculously fast. But... You have a really big magazine, and the SMG is a very good option for killing bosses quick because it fires the fastest, but the LMG is best just for general mobbing, at least in my opinion. A burst AR is also pretty good. You can do some crazy damage with that, but you have to always think, like, how am I going to ramp up my damage? And having something that fires really fast, like a double gun or an SMG, is a good option. Now, this is the best clip because the boss actually gets frozen before it can take damage. So I'm able to actually lay into it and do a ton of damage. And you can kind of see the numbers here. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? So many hundreds of millions. And then once the boss can take damage, it pretty much instantly melts. Birds, they just die like with a couple bullets. I mean, it's insane. Now, when I'm doing expeditions with this build, I easily get over 3 billion damage every run. But now I'm going to break down this build for you and tell you everything that you're going to ever want to know. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Pax Tree. And the very first perk is really nice, coming in hot. We deal more damage against enemies that are above 80% health, but we deal 30% more damage to enemies that are below 30% health. Anytime an enemy gets below 30% health, we will do some crazy damage to that enemy because of coming in hot. Plus, there's another thing we have in our skill tree, which will up that damage to 50%. So that's one of the reasons why you will completely destroy the boss once the boss gets below 30%. That's all those huge hundreds and hundreds of millions of damage is because you are doing 50% more damage to the boss whenever it's below 30% health. So this is a very, very nice perk if you want to instant melt the boss once it actually gets low enough. Now next up, you have a choice. I definitely say go for Ashen Wake. The defensive option is nice, but Ashen Wake is our only AoE we have on the build. So what you do is you Ash Blast, and then you Ash everything. And because you're doing tens of millions of damage, you shoot one guy, and the whole mob will die. Very, very nice. This is a single target build. It's not an AoE build, but this does give us a little bit of AoE, so that's always good. Hot Streak, I'm not even going to talk about it. It's very good, obviously. And then this is where we get juicy. Carbon Ammo. They gave the Pyro a 200% magazine increase. 
That is so crazy. I always complained about the pyro not having a magazine bonus from the skill tree. And then they go ahead and give us a 200% one. Now this is really crazy with double guns and LMGs because they have big mags to begin with. And this is going to up the mag to be ridiculous. And then we get bullet frenzy. I love assault weapons. I've always been a big fan of assault weapons. And when you're shooting your assault weapon, you're going to get an increase of weapon damage by 3%. The effect will stack until you stop shooting. Now, that's what the build's all about. You want to shoot, and you do not want to stop shooting. Now, the thing is, is that what's nice about this is that you have about one second where you can stop shooting, and you're not going to lose your stacks. So you can roll. You can reload, but only really SMGs. I mean, I've tried other weapons. Sometimes assault rifles can reload, and they're okay, but other times they can't. It's kind of confusing. SMGs are the only one that's consistent that you will not lose the stacks if you are reloading an SMG. You can use some powers, not all the powers, and you can swap your weapon. Swapping your weapon is important for keeping your stacks at times. I'm going to talk about that later. But this is what makes this so overpowered because there is a hard cap to this. And it really depends on whatever your base firepower is. Right now, at level 69 gear, I can get my firepower all the way up to about 17 million. Now, what's really crazy about that, because the Trickster can get really high firepower as well, but you have to do a bunch of stuff to boost it up that high. With this, once you have reached that high cap, you can sustain it. As long as you can keep shooting, you're going to sustain that damage. The only thing that's going to stop it is if you lose the stacks or if there's like a cutscene. So that's one of the things that makes it so overpowered. Now let's talk about the skill tree. And the first thing I just want to say about this is that when I first started playing the DLC, I looked at what they did with some of the mods. I didn't like what they did. So immediately I said, you know what? I'm going to try to do my old Pyromancer hybrid build. I had a build which was using a Kari armor and heat wave. But I was converting my anomaly power into firepower. And it was a pretty cool build. So I wanted to go ahead and try that again. So I'm only going to talk about the important things. Everything else you can see. But one of them is hot situation. Whenever we use our ash blast, we're going to get 45% anomaly power. That's really good. Burning situation, we get 45% weapon damage as well. Now ash blast actually has a 9 second cooldown. So you'll have these up 100% of the time. Very nice. We also get some debuffs to the enemies when we Ash them. Now, the only problem with Ash is that against, like, let's say the Arbiter, the boss of the trial, he will only stay Ash for about one second, maybe a half a second. It's not very long. So this isn't the best against him, but against everything else, it's extremely good. Now, a lot of your weapon damage is going to come against enemies that are marked. Now, to mark them, if you hit them with like overheat, which is the other power I'm using, that will mark them by shooting them. That will mark them. Ash blasting them will not mark them unless you're using a mod called Empowerment. But I have done testing, going down the bottom tree and doing other stuff, because some of these are really nice. This will give you anomaly power and weapon damage. If you grab all of these, your overall stats are going to go way higher, but your damage is going to be less. From my testing, I do think the top tree is the way to go. But this is where we're going to branch off. We're going to go down. Now, I normally don't like this, but I like it for this build because I'm using overheat. So if I'm shooting a target and I'm lighting him on fire, if I overheat, it's going to instantly ash him. At that point, he'll take more damage. So I do like this perk. We get a little bit of health here. Now, here's the perk I was talking about. This is going to give us another 20% damage versus enemies that are below 30% health and then the big one here is inferno bullets. That's the whole idea of the build We are converting all of our anomaly power or at least 55% of it into Firepower so what we're using is anomaly enhancement on our weapons. This is 40% when inferno bullets It's 55% there are a lot of mods that are going to give you huge amounts of anomaly power Plus, we're boosting that with Hot Situation. So that's just adding more and more damage to our build. Now, for the Ascension, I'm just going to let you look at it. 
What I would prioritize early on if you're a lower rank than I am, get weapon damage. I really like crit chance just because when you see those really large white numbers, like 70 something million, that means those are body shots that are critical hits. So that comes from your crit chance. Crit damage, elite damage. Magazine isn't super important because we have such a big mag, so you can save that for later. Long range and close range. Anomaly power, this is probably one of the more important ones because it's going to be converted. I don't know if anomaly damage affects the rounds or not, but status power is important for keeping the enemies ash longer because of ash and wake. We want to be able to take advantage of them and go ahead and get that AoE. For the skills, obviously we have the rounds. But for the powers themselves, Ash Blast is a must. It's super good. The big thing about it is that you can use it while shooting. You don't want to stop shooting. If you stop shooting at any point, it's not generally good. I don't recommend it. So that's why I really like Overheat. Overheat is another skill we can use where we can keep shooting. And I like it because one, it stuns the enemies. And it can proc one particular thing. That's going to be one of our mods. It's actually Anomaly Echo. Anomaly Echo is very good now. It gives you firepower and anomaly power. And basically we get a ton of firepower from this. So I want to keep this up at all times. So what I typically do is I do Ash Blast. I wait about three or four seconds. I do Overheat. And then basically I have Anomaly Echo up for 100% of the time. Now, in terms of other powers you can use, you can actually use Eruption. You can do this power and not lose your stacks. It's quick enough. You can do Thermal Bomb. It's quick enough as well. And sometimes you might lose the stacks with Feed the Flames, but most of the time you're able to keep your stacks going whenever you use Feed the Flames. But Heat Wave, you will lose it. And Phaser Beam, you will lose it. So do not use them at all. I personally think overheat is the best just because you can keep shooting while you do it and it will stun enemies and stuff for you. I really love it a lot. But there is one mod that's very good with Feed the Flames and I do think that it can potentially up your damage a little bit if you use that mod. But I just personally don't like using Feed the Flames. I know some people might think that this is how you get your ammo back. I do not recommend that either. The reason why is because it can be incredibly annoying when you're needing ammo and you're trying to use feed the flames and you can't hit anything either because they're all frozen with snap freeze from a technomancer or other pyros have used ash blast or you've used ash blast and now they're all frozen where you can't target them so i do not rely on feed the flames to give me my ammo back instead i use a much better method which is perpetual mobile this is amazing now you only need this on your mob clearing weapon which in this case should be an lmg lmgs have huge magazines so you're able to actually take advantage of this and have like a hundred something bullets left in your mag i mean that's crazy let me show you right now so in my current setup i have 355 bullets in this gun so 35 percent of this mag is like a hundred something bullets as long as i can get a kill when i have a hundred and something bullets left it's going to instantly refill my magazine to full. Now, if you really want to get crazy, which I do not recommend, but it is an option, you can swap the variant to be this. And basically, this is going to up your mag to 533. Now, this actually has a faster fire rate, which is good for building up your stacks quicker. But the big downside to this, I do think the standard is the way to go. Because if you look at suppressing, it actually has a lower base damage. Same with that one as well. But look at standard. It has a much higher base damage. And I have noticed from my testing, this is where you're going to get like the big, big numbers from the LMG. The other reason why LMGs are so good for this build is the effective range. Effective range matters a lot because there is damage fall off. So if an enemy's really far away and you're using like a SMG, an assault rifle, a double gun, you're going to do like no damage to them from that distance. An LMG does not really have damage fall off. You will hit them and do big damage to them from across the map. So an 80 meter effective range is insane. If you look at an assault rifle, even a tactical one, 
42 meters. Double guns will get 50 meters. And double guns are really good for this build because they have huge mags. They're very, very nice. I do like them. But the worst, of course, is going to be your standard SMG. It's only got 15 meters. But that's why I like to use this for maybe boss killing and not actually mobbing. So what you want to do is you want to have your mobbing weapon and your boss killing weapon. A good boss killing weapon is actually the tactical assault rifle. This will hit very hard. I have hit before for 366 million and that's insane. I actually have a screenshot of a large number but my old assault rifle which was a tactical one I accidentally deleted it and you can't lock your gear in this game so I deleted it and that sucks but it was a good one that I had it had a lot of damage on it this particular one here has very low firepower and that's like one of the downsides to a firepower build is that you're looking for guns that have like really high firepower the higher they're going to have more base damage so here's a good example the lucky jinx is a very good gun for this build it comes with perpetual mobile so if you're looking for a gun for mobbing this is a good one you want to put anomaly enhancement on it but this particular one i had at level 50 and it had 98,000.5, which was really close to maximum damage at the time so i knew that by upgrading this and i've upgraded it all the way i can kind of see what is the maximum firepower you can kind of get right now so it's a little bit over 600,000 at level 69 this smg is completely crap i mean the mods on it is bad you would think flesh render is really good it's really not burst of decay is just garbage but it has a really high base damage and it has crit damage that's the other thing if you're talking about in general for the build crit damage is really really good you want to have it if possible also status power is kind of a must because you want to get some status power on the build so that when you use like ash blast they stay ash for a while that's pretty important but for killing the bosses you don't really need to worry about that at all but here's a better example this smg has armor pierce on it so i don't want to use it but it has much better mods dark sacrifice is a good boss killing mod mage's rage is very good it gives you a lot of anomaly power which is converted into firepower but also fortress would be another good mod so if i could get something like maybe a purple smg that has really nice firepower nice damage on it and i can get some good mods on it that's what i would use i would definitely think that it would just wreck the bosses much faster now a really good gun i wanted to bring up is actually the Damascus Offering. This is an amazing gun because it's a legendary. You're going to be able to easily, hopefully, get it to drop, and you can get a really good extra mod on it. Maybe Fortress, Mage's Rage, something like that. It comes with anomaly enhancement. It has status. It has crit damage. So all you need to do is switch out Claymore and actually go ahead and get yourself Perpetual Mobile on this, and you're good to go. You would think that this chaos, this is a new weapon, would be very good, but the variant of this gun, not a big fan of. So it might be very good, it has perpetual mobile on it, but I just personally think that I don't like it because it's not a standard. The final pendant is another very good gun. This could be a decent boss killer. It comes with Mage's Rage and Anomaly Enhancement. It has crit damage on it. This has potential. Double guns are very good at a boss killing weapon. So the Lucky Jinx is super nice. I've been using this for boss killing, but you don't need perpetual mobile if you're going for a boss killing gun. And that's basically it. I will point out that this gun I've been using has critical point on it, and I love it. I have 28% critical chance. That just means that when I'm getting body shots, I'm getting crits all the time. And I'm getting these huge, huge numbers because of that. So I really like it. I'm not like an aim botter. I kind of aim center mass and I get crits, but I get a lot of body shots. So getting crits from body shots is very nice. Now let's talk about the armor. And one thing I would just want to quickly say, the best part about this build, especially early on, if you're just using purples and stuff, you can go for either anomaly power or firepower it does not matter 
I do believe anomaly power is better. So if I had a choice between which one I want, I would get more anomaly power. But if you're farming for gear, what's really cool is that if you get like a really good pair of gloves or boots and they have anomaly power, but let's say they have really good mods, it doesn't matter. Where a lot of builds, it just kills it. It's like, wow, this is a perfect pair of gloves, but I'm an anomaly build and it has firepower or it has max health. So I can't use it or I don't want to use it. This build, you have a lot more freedom and it makes it a lot easier to farm for. But eventually you do want to get yourself the Maxwell set. The Maxwell set, I'm not even going to really explain it too much. Just know that when you shoot stuff, you get more damage. And if you shoot something a lot, you get a lot more damage. So that's one of the reasons why SMGs are good too, is that you're going to be able to get this to proc like really quickly with an SMG. But the Maxwell set is very good and I would recommend eventually getting it. The problem is that there are some mods in here that I don't like. The helmet is fine. It comes with dumb dumb bullets. Dumb dumb bullets is extremely good. You definitely would want it on the build. I went ahead and put death sentence on there. That's amazing. But helmets can come with a T3 of Anomaly Echo. One thing to also understand, especially when you're talking about the extra mod slot, is that those are going to be always certain things. It's not like completely random. So like an example is on the helmet for this build, I would probably get Ashen Boost, which is more damage versus Ashed enemies, or I would get Anomaly Echo, and there's another pretty good one, which is Dead Clock. You can get this as a T3 on a helmet. And that's kind of it. There might be a couple other ones I'm not thinking of, but there you go. Now on the chess piece, I have Captain Hunter on here. Personal Space is not the worst mod, but it's also something I wish I could replace, but I can't. The extra one on this one is Self-Medication. That is busted right now. Whenever you use a power, you get all your health back. They're probably going to fix that. But guess what? I don't really care about that because there's actually a mod that I think is much better. I just think that defensively, it's a much better mod. And it's actually the emergency shield mod. This is super nice because what it does is that it gives you a lot of shields. And it only has a 5 second cooldown. Which is crazy. The amount of shields that you get it will keep you alive. And then all you got to do is just heal up a little bit. And as long as you don't die in 5 seconds, you're going to get another shield. So I was using that for the longest time. And literally, I like never died when I had that. I thought it was like the most incredible mod super super good so that's what i would do i would replace self-medication with the shield emergency mod another option on the chess piece that you can get because a lot of stuff is defensive you can get damage absorber as well on your chess piece that's not a bad choice you can get captain hunter on the chess piece as an extra mod that's pretty good because that would free up a mod slot now if you're going to do that you're going to lose a defensive mod then the Pyro needs a defensive mod. I'm sorry. I just think that you're kind of squishy without one. So one option is on the boots because the boots are a nightmare. They are a nightmare. It's very hard to get very good boots. But on the boots, you can get emergency stance, which will give you the golem protection, which is 75% damage resistance for four seconds. That has a 10 second cooldown, though. That's the downside. So overall, I probably wouldn't do it. I would just switch self-medication out for the shield mod and then I would be pretty much unkillable with that. Now for the pants, I have Kingslayer in here. Kingslayer is crazy. It's like 400,000 firepower for shooting an elite for 10 seconds. Bloodlust comes on these pants. I think Bloodlust is completely garbage. I hate it. Now Sharp Eye I'm cool with Sharp Eye. I know some people are talking bad about it now. I think Sharp Eye is fine, but Bloodlust is worthless. And that's the problem, is that you're kind of stuck with that mod. Now, Lava Shots, you can get that as a T1 on pants as an extra, and it's pretty good. The reason why it's good, though, is because it seems to escalate the higher your firepower gets. And this build's firepower gets very high. And I kind of feel like it just lets it get to that maximum quicker. Because the thing is, is that 
you're going to hit that max hard cap at some point, and that's with or without lava shots. You're still probably going to get to that point, but you'll get there quicker with it. So I like it for that reason, but there is actually a mod that can come on pants as an extra mod, which is pretty good, which is the new Feed the Flames mod. Now basically what this does is that if you overheal to feed the flames, you're going to get bonus damage up to 50%. Now you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, the overheal, how does that work? Just know that with this build especially, oh my god, you're always going to overheal. Look at this. You are going to drain 366,000 health. That's more than enough to overheal with just one thing. Like you just suck one enemy and you have the overheal. Now what's even crazier is that once I start boosting everything, because I boost up my anomaly power by a lot too, this will heal me for over a million health. Now, Feed the Flames, I don't like it because I find it awkward. I don't want to stop shooting. Not a big fan. But it is also a nice way of getting your health back. So an example is, let's say you really wanted to save that mod slot like I was talking about with the chest piece, where you get Captain Hunter, and maybe you're going to rely on using Emergency Stance instead. Feed the Flame then makes a lot more sense. It's a really quick way of getting your health back so you don't die. So that is an option. Now for the gloves, I have purples and I have anomaly power and status on this. I do feel like you wanna have status on one piece of armor if possible. Cooldown, by the way, the Maxwell set comes with cooldown. Once you have three pieces of cooldown, you're done. You have hit the cap. There's no up more cooldown you can get. So if you get any more, it's actually a waste. But having like that really nice amount of status will make the enemies stay ashed a lot longer, and Ash and Wake, our only AoE we have, is going to be more effective. Also, Death Sentence is nice, and just making the enemies take more damage because they're ashed is nice. So yeah. Now you might be wondering, how do I have T3 mods in my purples? Because I have T3 mods in my purples. Now I personally think that this is busted, and I hope they fix this, because if this is intentional, I think this is crap. Basically, the shops can sell purples that can have T3 mods in them. I'm trying to find one right now. I can't. But if you look at the shops, you will find purple weapons and armor. And what you can do every 30 minutes, go to Rift Town, go to Trench Town, go to the Forest Enclave, check the shops. You will find some armors and some weapons with T3 mods. Now, when you're farming the Trials... That like never happens. You never find T3 mods in the weapon or the armors. I've seen it a couple times, but it's very rare. And I think that's a bunch of crap because I don't want to farm shops. I want to farm the activity. So I hope they fix that. And I hope that the shop thing isn't like a mess up because that would just be ridiculous. I really feel like I don't want to have to use crappy legendaries because they can come with T3 mods in them. But for these gloves, though, the only thing that would make this glove better is that if it had long range or close range instead of healing received, that's what I would prefer. But I definitely do feel like you want to have the Ash Blast range. Without it, Ash Blast feels like it has no range at all. And that's something I do not like. I like having that range for Death Sentence. I like having it for Ashen, Wake. It's just important to me to have the range. Highly recommend it. Bullet kindling makes so much sense because when we're shooting something, we're setting it on fire. Now, ashen boost, which will give you more damage versus ash targets, that makes a lot of sense too. But when you're talking about like the boss, the boss will only stay ash for like a second. So I don't really think it's all that necessary. So I'm not using ashen boost on the build, but it can, like I said, come on the helmet as an extra slot. So if you do get that on the helmet, that's fine. Now, I have Arms and Anomaly. This is incredible. That's a lot of Anomaly power. And it has a 100% uptime. As long as you're getting a crit every 6 seconds, you're going to get all that Anomaly power and it's going to be converted into firepower. Super good. Then we have our boots. The boots are a nightmare because it's very hard to get good perks on boots. There's not a lot of options. Sharp Eye is probably your best option. Even if you don't think you're like Sharp Eye, it's really one of your only options you have. So if you're going to get a T3, 
that's it. Extra bullets, not something you really need, but you know, it's something to have, so you can go for that. There are better options, though. I'm going to talk about that at the end. But the other mod I'm using in this is Dead Clock. Dead Clock is actually pretty decent. I've tested it quite a bit, and I'm pretty confident it works the same way that Dark Sacrifice does. Dark Sacrifice was always way better than Killing Spree. Killing Spree and Dark Sacrifice had the exact same value. Back in the day, Dark Sacrifice gave you 75% weapon damage. Killing Spree gave you 75% weapon damage. But Dark Sacrifice was like a million times better. And I think the reason why, and I could be wrong, is that it calculates it after the fact. So it's just way more multiplicative that way. And I'm pretty sure Dead Clock works the same way. On paper, it seems like it's crap. It's only 8%. Now with this build, because I'm using Overheat, that's another reason why I feed the flames. I'm not a big fan. I feel like I have to use it way too much and I just don't want to. With Overheat and Ash Blast, I can have both skills on cooldown almost all the time. And I feel like I'm getting a nice boost from that. But that's basically it. That's the build. That's everything you need to know. Now I'm going to talk about other options, especially if you're trying to construct this building, you have nothing. You have a lot of things you can play around with and mods you can try out. And one particular setup you can do is an overheat setup. So I want to talk about that real quick. So I do have some boots here, which aren't perfect, but they're pretty good. And boots can come with Phoenix Force. Now Phoenix Force makes a lot of sense because that anomaly power is going to give us a lot of damage. Problem is, is that we have to consume statuses. Now the fire is not a very good status to consume because we're not lighting a lot of stuff on fire. That's just the reality of it. It's much better to ash blast and then consume the ash blast because you're going to get a lot that way. But to do that, you need Master Consumer. Now, Master Consumer, as an extra mod slot, can come on the boots. So if you can get a pair of boots where you can have Phoenix Force and Master Consumer on it, that's a really nice pair of boots, basically. And then you can switch out the other mod to whatever you want. And another thing, too, I just want to quickly mention is Anomaly Power versus Firepower. It's okay to have either or whenever you're constructing the build, but in the end, you do benefit a little bit more from Anomaly Power. I can show you real quick. So if we actually take a look at our Firepower, now the number you want to pay attention to is the Weapon Damage Bonus. That's the number that actually matters. 175%, 0.8, and that's with Anomaly. Remember, we're converting 55% of it to be Firepower. But mathematically, it doesn't really make sense because this is almost 50,000 Firepower here. And yet, if we look again, it's like 2% less. It's not like a huge difference, but it seems like the anomaly is better. Plus, and I don't know this for sure, how much does the anomaly really affect the fire bullets? Does it make them do a lot more damage? I know with twisted rounds it does, but with the fire rounds and the toxic rounds, I'm not too sure. The only thing I do know is that when you read the skill, it says it causes skill damage. So maybe the Anomaly Power is dramatically boosting the damage, and that is something to consider. So Anomaly Power with this particular build makes more sense. But like I was talking about, if you're going to do or try this Phoenix Force Master Consumer setup, which you can kill stuff with Overheat, and that would get you a lot of AoE. You will have a lot more like clearing, and you'll have faster times that way, especially with solos. I would say, though... That what I would do is on the chest piece as an extra mod, if possible, get Detonator. You can do that. That's going to reduce the cooldown of Overheat by 50%. So now it's going to be like 5 seconds. Very nice. Plus, I think on Gloves, you can get 2 charges of Overheat. And whenever you like spam it real quick, what's going to happen then is that you'll double consume. So you'll pretty much always have your 10 stacks of Phoenix Force going after Ash Blasting. I mean, it's pretty good. So I would recommend if you want to try that out, that is an option or some type of combination of that. It's not a terrible idea. Another thing too, if you're looking for some legendaries to use, the Cannonball Gloves and Boots are not bad. The Gloves come with Firepower and Cooldown, which... 
Remember, the cooldown, if you have the Maxwell set, is overkill. But these come with Captain Hunter. That's fine. And if you can get a T3 extra mod on it, that's pretty good. And if not, if you can get the Ash Blast Range or Bullet Kindling on the gloves as an extra mod slot, that's really, really nice. So these are pretty good if you're looking for some decent legendary gloves to equip. The Cannonball boots are actually pretty nice. Now these can come with the T3, so if you can get Sharp Eye on it, that would be fine. Or Master Consumer if you're going down that like idea. But the one mod on here I really like is Phantom Dash. In a perfect world, instead of having the magazine bonus, I would have Phantom Dash. Now the reason why is because with this build, you are a walking turret. And that means that during, let's say, an expedition, outside of a cutscene, you can keep shooting the entire expedition and keep your stacks up. You can sustain that huge damage. The only problem is, is that you are a little slow. You're just kind of hip firing and firing the whole time. And your teammates might be running ahead of you. So with Phantom Dash, you can shoot and dodge. So when you need to catch up, this can allow you to move a lot quicker. So I think that this has a lot of potential just because you can move really fast. Another thing too, at any point, you won't lose your stacks if you switch to your other gun and start shooting it. And if you know that you're going to run out of ammo, like 100%, there's nothing to kill. You're going to run out. Just go ahead and switch to your other gun, start shooting it, and then your ammo will cool down, switch back, pop the ammo, and there you go. So that is something you can do. And also because of the fact that you had ammo on, let's say, your LMG, and then you switch it, when you switch back to the LMG, you'll have a full magazine. So you can just keep shooting like... It's just ridiculous. The fact that you're able to swap your gun, you're able to do all of that, means that you can keep shooting for literally ever. And there are a lot of things you can play around with this build and test it out. Let me know in the comments if you figure anything out. But this build is ridiculous. It is absolutely insane. And I definitely recommend trying it out. I've not seen people use this build that much. And I'm really surprised just because... It is so, so strong. But that's going to pretty much do it for the video, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it and it has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? Be sure to subscribe for future Outriders videos. And if you do, make sure to click the bell. That way you can stay notified. Thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day. And peace out.